Hi guys, welcome back to another episode of the Ajax Youth Project and we are at the end of season three, right? Yeah, yeah, season three. And this has probably been the, up to now obviously, it's been the biggest, um, it's been the biggest improvement in the players I would say. Uh, we've got by Barcelona in the Champions League final as well to play, which is uh, is pretty big. I'm um, going to be playing that in a second. But first of all, we're going to go through the... Because uh, the main part, main story of the video is um, the youth players, right? The young players, the uh, the improvement of the players, how we've improved them, what level they've improved to, etc, etc. So, I've sorted it by attributes on the side, uh, appearances on the side. There'll be a lot of sub-appearances for everyone because it was quite highly rotated during this season. But the main player was Mark Dignet. Um He came through... First season, maybe, as you can see there, it's fantastic. Um, I'm going to move my camera up to here, maybe. Okay, now I'll move it down there for now, and then I'll change it after. Right, so Matt Dignet, he's been fantastic. He came through as a central midfielder, as you can see, um, at the top there under his name. And then I changed him to a left-back because we were struggling for left-backs that I thought was going to make it, and he's been brilliant. Um, he's wanted by Sporting Lisbon, but... He's a two-and-a-half star left-back now. He's 18. He looks like he's still got plenty of time to grow, which is fantastic. But he's played 40 games this year, an average rating of 7.26. And then, obviously, for this little part here, I do need to move my camera. So, there we go. So, if you look at this down here, right? Crossing up two, dribbling up one, first touch up one, marking up four, which is what we concentrated on, right? It was seven when he came through, and so was positioning. Positioning was actually eight. We, we worked on his defensive positioning. So those two have got up four each. This is what you can do with regular game time. Um, knowing what role, what what to improve, when to improve it, when to change it. So this season, uh, what I've done with Mark, uh, Mark is uh, we've gone from half the season as, a, as defensive positioning. And it's gone up to 11 and 12, which is, I'm happy with. 11 and 12 is fine for now. And then I went to ball control to get his dribbling up his first touch. And I, d I don't really need technique up, to be honest. It was just to, like, to try to try get the dribbling in his first touch up. I want really technically good players at Ajax. That's what we want. Um, <clears throat> the next thing we train him on, once his dribbling goes to 12, um, is, I would say, final third. Get his composure up. Uh, I, want his, uh, I want his composure up. Ajax players have to be technically well-trained and very composed on the ball. All right, next one is Kian Fitzjim. We can't look at Kian Fitzjim because he's out on loan. I've sent a few players out on loan, but he has got better. I don't know if he's going to be good enough, but he's definitely got better. He's got four teams in good areas. Um, I think one more season to try. And we've, we've loaned him out this year to uh, to, the, to the Eredivisie, and he's played like 33 games out of, what, 34? So that's a good loan for him. Tristan Gouillet. Gouillet? Gouillet? He's also come along very nicely. Very well-rounded now. 19 still. Right back. Um, played all like, 28 games, just under a 7 rating for Grinningen. Very, very powerful physically. He's Everything's come along really well. He's, he's quite a, a well-rounded player now. 12 dribbling, 12 first touch, 12 marking, 12 passing, 12 uh, technique. Could play wing back, can play full back. If you want him, you can play centre back, no problem. Uh, he's still got a little bit to go. We'll, keep, we'll keep, probably loan him out again next year to an even better team. Uh, Grinningen are, I think, getting relegated. Let's have a quick check. Yeah, so we'll probably send him back into the area visit this year. Jay Gorter, my goalkeeper, been fantastic. Um, look, just look at his uh, goalkeeper attributes. Communication up by three, command of area up by two, which were his weak points, right? Remember? Off th one on one's up two to 15. Like now he's become. Obviously, his physicals and his mentals have gone up, which is brilliant, but now he's actually become a very, very, very good goalkeeper. And I think he's. Is he Dutch number one now? I think he's Dutch number one now. Or is it Bijlo still? It's he gets played a fair. I think he gets played quite a lot. Gorta. He's got. Oh no, I think he's number two still. Okay, Bijlo's number one, which is fine. He's uh, only considered five goals in the league this year out of twenty-one games, sixteen clean sheets, which is massive. Absolutely massive on him. He's coming along absolutely fantastically. Gravenberch. Gravenberch has not moved too much at all, really. Um, I don't know the reason for that because he's played like a hell of a lot. Maybe he's already at full, almost full potential at the start of the game. I don't know. But his penalties and his free kicks have gone up by two, which is very strange. 
Position up by one, vision up by one, anticipation up by one. I mean, there's a few other things that have gone up by one, but not by 1.0. I think they've gone up by about 0.7. I said this every episode, right? You guys know what I mean by now. Um, but yeah, he, oh, I don't know. He's close to full potential, apparently, but he's fine because he's fantastic, right? 20 goals in 28 games, 12, 12 player, of the match assist, uh, player of the match awards, 7.58. Yeah, he's, he's brilliant. He's absolutely brilliant. He's one of our best players. So, I, yeah, I suppose this series wasn't really aimed at him. Um, Sebastian Haller, again, 12 goals, 20 appearances. He's just all right. He's, he's what it is. Uh, Alvaro Henry, he's one that I had doubts about at the start. Um, and we've... we've pre he's done all right, as you can see. Headings up to, uh, decisions, determination up to, strength up to. We've made him into a... He's a decent 19-year-old, right? I, I don't know how I get him to the next level. Maybe I loan him out next year. Um, I give him a loan a couple of seasons, well, one season ago, and he, I just don't know if he's got the potential for it. Because obviously, not everyone can have the potential, right? This series is about getting people to maximum potential. It's not about it's not about getting wonder kids to, to their top potential because anyone can do that, right? Anyone can get a good player from Argentina, good personality, good, good attributes, good potential, just play him, and he becomes an absolute Ballon d'Or winner, right? That's not what this series is about, really. Like, it'll help you in that respect, but it's more about getting the maximum out of even players that aren't the best, potentially. Um, but yeah, he's still only 19. It's fine. We can give him another year out, uh, out on loan. And if we can get these to 12, 13, we've got a nice little squad player there on his hands. Uh, Stanis Idumbo Mazambo. It's a, it's a big mouthful, that, isn't it? That's what she said. Um, he's still got four and a half star potential. He's still got very good, strong attributes in, uh, in key areas. Next year is a breakout for him. I think he's going to go out on loan. I didn't play him much this season. Played in the B team a lot. Did really well. Second division. That's still a good level. Um, but yeah, next season he's going to go into the Eredivisie, I'm hoping. in uh, First team in Eredivisie team. And that should be his breakout season. And then the season after that, he should be into the first team. Um, who else we got? David. In fact, let's just have a look at his development, Stanis. I don't think he's gone up that much. Oh, he has. Okay. Wow, four anticipation, three composure, three decision making is massive. Four off the ball, huge. Which is what we 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 uh, we targeted those four attributes, right? So as you can see here, attacking movement, it does off the ball, decisions, and anticipation. But I also did final third, which does decisions and composure. So decisions has had like a really hyper focus, and then anticipation, composure, and off the ball has also had um, like a secondary focus. So obviously I was doing final third there, which is composure and decisions, right? And as you can see, those four attributes, I've got it by four. Well, three, three, four, and four. Um, heading's gone up two. I think that's just gone up naturally. Corners two, I've not really touched that. Don't know why that's gone up. Penalty taken as well. Whatever. Balance, I've not worked on, but that's gone up. It was four when he came through. Um, but yeah, I think I still want his off the ball to go up and his anticipation. We'll need that to go up. So next season, that's hopefully where I'll train him on until I loan him out. And then after that, we might look at, I don't know, don't know to be honest. I think it'll be mentally with him. But technically, <clears throat> technically, sorry, Balan. Technically, he's brilliant. Physically, he's never going to be strong because he's quite a small, slippery fella, right? <clears throat> with his uh, agility and his dribbling. Maybe his balance. Can we get his balance up. Uh, but yeah, he's been brilliant. David Coloca. Um, he's played 22 starts this year. This is been his breakout season. I've got high hopes for him. He's still five star potential. So next year he'll be playing even more. <clears throat> Coloca has gone up two in dribbling, three in off the ball, three in decisions. As you can see, there's quite a theme with these. I do like training those two especially. Um, now I'm working on his agility and his balance, as you can see. Um, they've both gone up three each, which is fantastic. But yeah, as you can see, <clears throat> it'll be a common thing that I. This is how I prefer to do it. I like to do it. Anticipation there from nine, thirteen. So actually, oh no, ten to thirteen. But you can see it's just under ten, so it's probably like nine point seven or something like that. Um, but yeah, like I said, this is a common theme of getting these four attributes up, right? This is what I like to work on a lot, these four. Anticipation, composure, decisions, and off the ball. Decisions being the most important attribute in the whole game. Because every single thing on a football pitch is, is a decision. Every single thing is a decision. Think about it. Where to move, when to move, who to pass to, how hard to pass it, how to shoot, when to shoot, what area of your foot to shoot. Every single thing is a decision. In fact, in life, every single thing is a decision. My decision to record this video. My decision to take a sip of this drink. You see what I'm saying? Everything is a decision. So decision, or decisions, 
are the most important part of FM football and probably life, to be honest. So, um, so without getting too deep, uh, yeah, that's what I like to work on. So, the main two really is attacking movement because that works on off the ball anticipation and decisions. And then final third works on his composure, which is very, 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 very good. Um, he stops the long, long balls up the pitch, especially from defenders. And uh, and decisions again, so it's I get I get both focusing off both those things. Um, I think I'm gonna what I'm gonna do is when the when the league resets and the and whatever, I think he had a little niggling injury, that's why he's gone down a little bit. But um, next year he I might aim to loan him out into the area divisi. If I can get a full season out of him in the area divisi by the time he's 20, he might come back as a starter. I think next season like uh, Mazambo is a very very key season for him. Kiera, see Kiera, I'm a little bit disappointed with. He keeps playing full seasons in the second division, and he's done really well, fantastically well. Um, potential wise, I don't know. He's I don't know if he's got the highest potential. That's the thing, right? But again, I've got his composure up five, his decisions up three, which has really helped him. Um, average rating and, and performance wise. Uh, I think I think we're trying to loan him out as well to Eredivisie. I think there's a lot of players in that category that we need to we need to get into an Eredivisie team. And David Klassen's not Skender Kohler managed to loan him out to De Grafschap, right? This guy came through last season. Um, I play I've played him a few times in the uh, first team. He's not good enough for it, but I've played him against teams that should be. But he's got five star potential, right? Um, I don't know if he's a right back or a centre back long term. He's got pace. I think he's a right back long term. Um, but if he if he uh, if his jumping reach goes up to 13 14 eventually which it could do it'll be a very 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 solid center back so at the minute i'm keeping my options open but i have loaned him out he played really well for the graph sharp uh, he's got a kosovo cap as well really high uh, high high hopes for skender cola um kudus a little bit of an honorary member for kudus this this series isn't really for him as he was a very good player already but i'd just like to show you how the hyper focus on the final third uh, I've got his decisions up by five. That started as nine, obviously. Nine until 14, right? So it goes up by five. And it's changed him massively as a player. I can see in the game, I can see it. The decisions he's making, the right decisions, almost every single time. Um, but he's now a very, 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 very top level central midfielder, attacking midfielder. He's not got anything really under 14 that you would want. Um in one of these roles attacking midfield roles 16 15 obviously long shots is i've seen people score long shots with one so let's not count that one 15 17 15 14 flair yeah maybe flair could be a bit better 15 16 15 14 see what i'm saying and he's pacey he's left footed he's got good uh, good traits that suit his game uh, gets into opposition area good off the ball good anticipation runs with ball often 16 dribbling tries tricks 17 technique See what I'm saying? He's absolutely amazing. And he scores goals. He scores penalties for us. He's got assists. Um, he's one of the best centre midfielders, attacking midfielders in the game, I would say, right now. Um, four and a half star player. So, yeah, we've actually turned him from a good player to a world class player. Um, Ayani Martha. Um, I think this is probably my fault. Um, he's still got a bit of potential. I'm not, I've, I've not lost hope on um, Ayani, but he's, just, he's got an injury just now. Loaned him out last year, didn't do terribly well. This year he's gone to the second team, again, done brilliantly. And if we look at his development, again, as you can see, it's a, it's a theme. These these attributes here have improved quite a lot. And you can notice, if you've got a player that's underperforming, a youngster, that's getting maybe 6.6 or 6.7s, just for a season, just say, do you know what, I'm going to trust Lewis. And for six months of the season, work on his attacking movement. Especially if he's an attacking player, of course, right? If he's a defensive player, work on his defensive positioning. But also work on their final third. This composure and decisions is a must for any position. Any position on the game. There's no position that doesn't need composure and decision making. Even goalkeepers, if you want him to play out from the back. So just trust me because especially decision making, honestly, if you get a 20 decision making player, game changer. Like, it's just so big. It's so, so big. And I've just realized that my camera has actually... Uh... I don't know when that happened. So apologies, guys. I'm going to carry on with the video because I suppose you don't need to see me, but I'm coming back. I am there. Hi. <laughs> I don't know when that went off. Apologies when it did. Um, it's just one of those things that happens when you're recording. 
but you could still hear me right i'll check afterwards i'm sure you can you only need to hear what i'm saying anyway but i'm back anyway so yeah ayani martha i'll load him up next season no problem um imagery not really to do with him Mil milovanovic he's come he's coming on he's a little bit lower than what i'd like in some areas but he's still I'll, I'll, like i said next year he's going out for another loan uh, he's played almost every single game this year for um for nec and he's uh and he's over, averaged over a seven. He has improved a fair bit. I can't look at it right now because he's out on loan, but he has. Um, he, he's becoming a, well, a very well-rounded player, especially a centre-back down here with uh, 13 passing, 14 vision. Um, like I said, just a good ball-playing centre-back, which is what you need as an Ajax team. Um, Gabriel Misahoy. As you can see, look how good he's coming on. Now, this guy is special. He's 18 years old. He's played 19 stats this year in the area division. More than half, really, because half 17, right? 34 games. Um, and he's just, I mean, look at him. He's like Gravenberch B2, V2. And I am also thinking about maybe retraining someone to be the... I don't know. If, the thing is, right, I need someone to be a false nine. Because I don't think I've got a striker good enough to make us into a Champions League winning team. We'll see, right? We're about to play the Champions League. But but to be a complete team that can constant, consistently win it, um, I need a false nine. Now, there's a. I don't think Misa Hoy's the guy because I don't think he's agility. He's high enough um, and he's balanced and he's off the ball. Maybe they are. I mean, I, we'll see. But yeah, this guy is just. His anticipation is going to buy six. Off the ball by three. Vision by two. His physicals have flown up. But that's because of age as well, right? Uh, technique, passing. Everything's getting polished off now. And um, we're working currently on attacking movement because I want his off the ball, his decisions and his anticipation to go up. Um, at some point, I'm going to work on his um, agility and his balance. In fact, I might do that now for the end of next... For six months from now till the middle of next season. Try and get this up to 14s, maybe. And then he's, we'll, go up to his, we'll go for his physicals, uh, his quickness to get those up to 14. We're going to try and make him a bit of a, like a physical beast. And then if I do decide to make him a, a false nine, uh, we can do that, no problem. But yeah, he's a big one in this save, Gabriel. Uh, he's been brilliant for us. Um, Nashi Unavar. I've sort of not played him as much because of the uh, because of the emergence of a player that's not been shown yet. I'll, I'll tell you when he does um, appear. But um, he, he's, yeah, there's a lot of things that I've gone up, like his acceleration from 12 to 13. Um, we still need to work on that. We need to make him a bit, bit quicker. 13, 14 and 13. Uh, 14 and 14 would be uh, so much better for him. We are currently working on that. Yeah, makes sense. Uh, at, least I'm, uh, at least I'm consistent with my decisions and I can see what I need to be doing and I am doing it. Um, I'm not just saying these things to you guys that I'm not doing myself. Um, but yeah, I think next season I need to play him more. There's a shout for him to be the false nine, and I've played him there a few times and did quite well. Um, I think that's what we're probably going to do, just looking at him now. His dribbling is top-notch, his agility, his technique, and he can finish too, to be honest. Moves into channels, tries killer balls, which is really good. Yeah, next year, we're going to try him as a false nine and see what happens. Um, just make him a little bit quicker, and then uh, we're working his off the ball, and we should have a good little false nine on his hands. I might make him drop deep as well. I'm going to try and make him come deep to get the ball. Um... Let's see what happens. Let's see what they say. Uh, is it on movement? I'm sure it's on movement, right? To come deep to get the ball as often as opportunity allows. Okay, I don't think that's such a good idea. Dennis Bergkamp tells me that. Um, it's a trait that suits players with both the ball movement, which isn't one of his strengths. Well, it will be when we sort it out. So I'm just going to say, uh, go with it, go, go on with it. Because that sometimes works anyway, right? You don't have to listen to the coaches. You're the manager. You're in charge. Right, Calvin Ratsy. So, this season... He played the start of this season, and then he fell out of favour. I think he might have got an injury, actually. Um, but I then loaned him out in January to Las Palmas. Now, he's considered a lot of goals, but he's very busy with Las Palmas, so he's got a high rating, because obviously they were one of the worst teams. They've got relegated. But he's played every single game since he's been there, from January or end of January onwards, and he's actually improving quite nicely. Now, he's 22, so he's... People might be like, oh, that's quite old and his attributes aren't good enough for, for 22. But he's a goalkeeper. You've got to remember that goalkeepers improve three or four years after. So, like, really he's an 18-year-old as an outfield player, right, uh, in terms of development. So, he, he's fine. He's absolutely fine. Um, his technicals, is that, yeah, they're technicals, I suppose, for goalkeepers. Yeah, they are. Uh, goalkeeper attributes. His, his mentals are absolutely brilliant. And they'll improve with age. And his physicals are already absolutely unbelievable. 
Uh, maybe we could sort of balance out, but 15s in these areas, 14s here. Third. I suppose you don't need to strength, but if you're coming out for the ball, you probably do need it, right? Um, you guys can't see that because I'm a moron. And it, there you go. Um, but yeah, I've, the low knees, I've got to show you this screen because I can't go into the development tab really and show you because he's out on loan. But um, yeah, he's, uh, he's also quite good with both feet, tries to play out of trouble. I don't mind that, to be honest. Uh, but yeah, his physicals, uh, his technicals as a goalkeeper need to go up next year. But if you can imagine in your mind that this is like all these are 13, these top three, that's 12, 12, 14, 14, 14. You're on the verge there of a top, top keeper. So let's keep his, uh, let's keep his focus on Ratsy and we'll uh, we'll try and loan him out next year again if possible. If we get a good loan move. If not, we'll just play him in the first team and we'll rotate him and go to. Yuri uh, Regeer is a weird one. Don't think he's going to make it. Not everyone can make it. Uh, he's a bit of a, I don't know where to play him. He's probably a DM, and I think I'm going to try and get him out on loan again. But every single game for the second team. And he's just not improved at all since the game started. And, that, and that's fine. Sometimes that's the, that's the way it is, right? Um, concentration's gone up from 10, uh, from 11 to 12. And it does look like work rate. Gone up from 12 to 13, and it also looks like his acceleration's gone up from 10 to 11. But that's it. That's it. Some have gone down, as you can see. Some players just won't respond well to training, unfortunately. They just won't, and Regeer is one of them. We'll keep trying, but we're not holding out much hope. Uh, Divine Wrench. Uh, this is not really for him either. This this whole this whole thing. But uh, we'll we'll show you him anyway. He is now our first choice right back. Now he's injured for the Champions League final, which is an absolute nightmare. But that's the way it is. He's not improved massively, but I've improved him on areas that he needed. So now he's got 15 passing, 13 marking, 13 tackling, 13 dribbling, 13 first touch. You see what I'm saying? I'm trying to polish these players off into 13s and 14s um, across the board. His mentals are absolutely brilliant. Uh, he can play across the back. He can play in defensive midfield. He's either footed. He's physically very good. And he never lets me down, um, apart from when he gets injured. So thank you, Divine. Anas Salah Adin, another one, like Regia. Not going to make it. Show his attributes right now. There you are. There's a bottom. Um, yeah, not really improved. Physically, he's done all right. Like I said, there's some people that won't improve. It's impossible to improve everyone. I've tried. Not looking likely. Might have to sell him off. Um, Shurs, I've not really played. He's just a solid backup. He's at his potential. Just if I get an injury crisis, he'll be playing. Uh, not much to say about him. Charlie Setford. Charlie, Charlie, Charlie. I don't know how much potential he's got left, but he's uh, he's very he's, he's he's coming along quite well. Um, he's probably in front of Ratsy in terms of his development for this age. Um, but yeah, I think next year I might loan him out. We'll loan we'll loan one of Ratsy and Setford out, and the other one will exchange game time. Depending on the best loan that I can get, um, and which facilities are the best for which team. I want to get him in the top divisions as well. Um, the, the the standard of football is better than everything else I would say so for example I would rather send him to a La Liga team with average facilities than a La Liga second team um, like a smart bank team with um, state of the art facilities because I think game time is the best um, thing to improve yeah it's the best thing that you need to improve uh, Xavi Simons didn't play him much this year but I think that's because I signed him and I felt guilty that I'd signed someone I mean he still improved it a hell of a lot if you look at these two two three three four in positioning i mean i did work on that that's why his markings gone up three i worked on defensive positioning now i'm working on final third which is a thing i do i probably need to change that to be honest um i think i do want to make him into a defensive midfielder long term so i think we go defensive positioning just to work on his marking it's a little bit low once that gets to its 13 area again and um, we're very happy with him and then we'll probably work on off the ball just to try and get his anticipation up for these uh for, for when he's in defensive midfield and off the ball's nice in defensive midfield for when uh, your defenders have the ball and they're always making themselves an option. Physically, he's very good. I don't need to touch that. But yeah, Xavi Simons is uh, is a very very solid player to bring on. Honestly, in any three midfield positions, defensive midfield, two centre midfield spots, he performs well in all three. So he's nice to have around. Rico Speckschneider. This guy's played a lot this year. Twenty two games. He's been a starter, quite fair, to be fair, um, and he's performed hugely. Um, his physicals have just flown up 
His mentals have flown up. His technicals need a little bit of work. So I think that's what we're going to work on this time this time around. And we're going to work on his uh, his ball control. So he's dribbling up, his first touch up, and his technique up. But yeah, absolutely brilliant. His, uh, his Rico, he's got um, he's got a nice little long shot on him as well. I think both of those goals were long shots. Um, they stick in my mind because obviously those brilliant goals. But yeah, if, I, I might test the waters on a loan for him. We'll see. If I can get a top division loan for him every single game in a, in a good division, maybe Bundesliga or something, I don't know. I might take it. We'll see. We shall see. Dusan Tadic, not interested. Kenneth Taylor, just coming along quite nicely. Don't really, don't really say much about him. Um, Jurian Timber, he's basically at his full potential as well. This is the guy I was talking about, Van Dongen. He's wanted by Dortmund now. And he's also got a Dutch cap, right? So this guy is coming along nicely. He's got 10 goals, 14 assists in 25 games for the first team, so 7.43. He's now a first teamer. Um, and yeah, this guy needs a bit of polishing again. Uh, we're working on his agility and his balance. I'm going to try and get his balance to 14. Once that's at 14, we'll leave that. Um, and then we'll probably work on... What should we work on? Off the ball is 12. He's not very good. But then I do want his ball control to go up. I think I'll leave his balance. His balance is already go up in time because he's still young. I think we're going to work on his uh, his ball control. And also I need to work on some traits. I don't know what traits to work on yet. Um, maybe he runs with ball often when his, agility, uh, when his, uh, when his dribbling goes up. But yeah, this guy's fantastic. Absolutely brilliant. He's uh, he's a goal machine as well, and it doesn't look like it, but um, he doesn't he doesn't get that much chances, that many chances. But when he does, he scores them. He's quite quite clinical. Either footed too, which helps. But yeah, he's uh, he's amazing, and he's gone up tenfold in a lot of these areas, the areas for a winger right anticipation, composure, decisions, off the ball, vision, dribbling, first touch, technique, and then his physicals obviously have just blown up. Uh, Van Lent, don't know if he's going to make it. He's he's from a young, uh, he came from an, a youth intake. He's all right, nothing amazing. Let's not spend too long on him, but yeah, all right. To be fair, he's coming along. <clears throat> we'll see what he's got in the locker next year as, a, as the B team, uh, as the B team goalkeeper. Silvano Voss needs a loan. Um, still five star potential. I feel like I've dropped the ball a little bit on him. But he keeps rejecting loans. He's improved quite well, as you can see. But um, but he keeps rejecting loans. Yeah, he needs to he needs to go out next year. He needs to stop being so uh, so picky. Oliver Etson, Olivier Etson. Um, now he's our first choice centre back. Really, um, he's got a Dutch cap as well, which is fantastic. He's uh, played thirty games this year. He was one of my mates. as you can remember the stats, episode one. If you watched episode one, I'm sure, I hope you did. If you didn't, start there and uh, and work yourself up. But <clears throat> Oliver Etson. He's now the first choice centre back. His, his tackling's a bit lower than I'd like, but you can't work on the tackling. There's no there's no things to work on. So what I've just done is I've made his physicals catch up, and his mentals are absolutely brilliant. And then uh, and then I'll just at the end I'll just make him uh, a bit fit, a bit better te tactically, uh, t technically sorry <laughs> tactically. Um, but he's just all round very good. Like I said, got a cap for uh, for, for Holland. I think going forward he'll probably will once Van Dijk and, uh, and those guys retire. Either footed, wonder kid, just very, 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 very good. We're trying. I'm trying to make him uh, brings the ball out of defence. So I'll try that again. Technique. Uh, that that is. I don't know if he's going to do it. You need dribbling for that for this to work. And twelve dribbling for a centre back is very good. But yeah, he's he's absolutely amazing. Um, he's out on loan. Alvarez not interested. Anning's not going to make it. I don't think. I just want to for this purpose of speeding this video up. Um, Got, as you can see, a few guys out on loan. Joran Berhout, who I've got high hopes for. And Julian Brandes as well. They'll go on loan again. Brian Broby, he's now worth 30 million. He scored 25 goals this year for us. He's uh, he's our main striker now. He's gone up more than last time. We were struggling last time. I think next season is going to be his big one. Uh, Nasef Shurak. Got him out on loan. Shurak? <laughs> Shurak. Okay, well, yeah. I suppose it is Shurak, isn't it? He played every single game for Heronveen in the Eredivisie. And he uh, played just under a seven, so this guy's uh, this guy's going to be improving and improving next year again. Got another loan, and that should help him out a bit more. Maybe some games for my team, maybe potentially we might use him in our team. Um, Darame, just brilliant. Not really using him as much this year because of Van Dongen, but when we've needed to in tough games, he's played. It's done well. Um, as you can see, he's an absolute monster now. Uh, he's worth eighty million. 
and then we're back to Niet. So yeah, that's a bit. That was a bit wordy. The first half. There's a half an hour there. Apologies, but I sort of. I can't really. I can't really do it any other way. I've got to go through all the players. Uh, there's nothing. There's anyone I've missed. They're all in the first team. Really, the ones that I'm concentrating on. Um, I suppose I could show you the intake. Janis Berg, actually, to be fair, when we came through the intake last year, not mentioned him, but he's absolutely flown up, especially his uh, physicals. Look at that. <laughs> not, I don't think I've ever seen that happen uh, in such a short, short space of time. Everything's going to buy at least uh, two words, but SX from agility, right? But yeah, he's, uh, he's, he's flying. He's also driven, which helps. But if I can get him as a loan next year, I think he'll absolutely blow up. Um, but yeah, I think he's got high potential, to be totally honest. Probably do with him putting him in the first team next year, which we will do right now. And I think that's it, the ones that I've been focusing on. In terms of the intake, run for it quite quick. Uh, we got Tim. Did we get Tim Adrian through? Yeah, we got Tim Adrian through. Um, he's a weird one. He's a defensive midfielder. I think he's more of a box to box. He's got he's, 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 he's good at everything, to be totally honest. Passing, he can tackle, he can mark, he can. He can position himself. He's got good mentals. Physicals are fine. Um, he's four stars, which is absolutely brilliant. That's four stars. You've got to remember that's four stars up against Kudus and Gravenberch. So if he turns out like those guys, which is suggesting he will, brilliant, right? For a team like Ajax at the top of the league, four star potential is fine. Four and a half star is brilliant, and five star is absolutely like top 10 level in the world. <clears throat> um, yeah, he's just had an injury. Obviously, that's why he's he's, he's, he's not getting uh, the development he needs. But I think I'm going to put him into the first team next year and then make him a regular in the B team. I think that's where he is. We've got Piet Dilgra D Dijkgraaf. Dijkgraaf. Uh, I've got high hopes for this guy as well. Um, he came through as a two and a half star, but I like the look of him and he's ambitious. So I signed him and he went up to four star. So I've got really high hopes for him. Um, again, I think he's another one that we uh, look at changing his team maybe. We've got Jordi Copier striker a pacey striker with technique flair first touch composure and very good physicals i've got high hopes for him i don't think the series is going to go on long enough to show him in probably but maybe on the last episode i'll holiday 10 years in front and see what happens see if, the, if you guys want that let me know in the comments um but yeah him and then danny stute is uh, a left winger who came through and he's four and a half star potential at 15 so yeah he's <laughs> He's, I think he's going to be very, very good. Uh, I don't know. He's, I don't know his final position because he's, he's a weird one. I can't really play him in the centre because his vision's five. And I was thinking maybe left back, but then, he, but then his positioning, his tackling, and his marking's five. But he's right footed as well. And then it's like, what would you guys do with him? I don't know. Let me know in the comments, dudes. Uh, let me know. Um, I think we've got to get it early though. We've got to really focus on what we want to do with him early and really nail it. Maybe he's maybe he's passing honestly and, and, and try and get this vision up because he's an attacking player. You need vision, right? Either if you're on the wing or in the centre. And then we got Ayub Atuchi, who's a defensive midfielder again, um, a Moroccan as well. Four star potential. We've got good intakes, to be totally honest. I don't know if they're still there though on this screen. Uh, yeah, they are. These four. But yeah, four, three four stars and a four and a half star. But yeah, that's absolutely brilliant, isn't it? Right, I'll be right back and we'll play the game against Barcelona in a second. Alright guys, we are back and this is the team we're going to go with. Um, a bit of a risk with Anthony. I know that sounds stupid, but he's not playing very well. Eight goals this season, but he's, he's in a bit of a bad run of form. I'm hoping he's a big game player and uh, and he scores. But yeah, this is the team. Broby up front. Darami and Anthony on the wings. Kudus, Gravenberch, Kenneth Taylor, uh, Diniet, Timber, Alvarez, Masri and Gorta. Um, Ertzen's a bit injured and I don't want to risk him. So we're going with Alvarez. Um, and obviously Wrench is injured so we're going with Masri fine he's probably not as good but he's not far off but yeah that's the team <clears throat> let's see what happens let's see what happens their team like Eric Garcia John Stones Manuel Kanji Costas Timikas Frankie De Jong Pedri Carvalho Griezmann Torres Depay Christian. so do the team talk and then before this game starts uh, i'm just going to really really quickly show you we won the air division unbeaten no problem this year um didn't get the top scorer because I, I, I rotated the strike force around i tried false nines etc etc but that's fine it doesn't matter um in the champions league though we won the cup as well by the way so um in the champions league we had besiktas leipzig and psg 
And we came top by one point. Oh, did we come second? We come top by one point. That was it. Yeah, we beat Besiktas last game, I think. Yeah, and uh, those guys. I oh, know we drew with Besiktas and the Leipzig beat PSG. So we actually went ahead of them by one point. Yeah, it was neck and neck. Um, and then in the Champions League first knockout, we got Bayern Munich. We won 2-1 the first leg. Um, yeah, they scored late. We... we we gave them a goal at the end. I remember the goal because obviously it was Masri that gave the, they gave the ball away. But I was, I was a bit gutted about that because we controlled, not controlled, but we were. It, it, I think the stats looked really bad like that. You can see 18 shots to nine. But if you look at the XG, there wasn't much more. Like they had, a, they had one really good chance from the mistake and that's that inflated their XG. But a lot of their shots were sort of like not really prob problematic for us. But I was really good quality chances. And we got a penalty as well, which which inflated the XG too. But I don't know. It was weird. It, it didn't. It doesn't look comfortable, but I felt comfortable. Second leg, we were much better. 1-0. Uh, and it was at home. And we actually, uh, we actually, I mean, we were the better team. We weren't amazing, but we were a better team. We did what we needed to do. They didn't really look a threat. It was weird. Um, then we played Chelsea. We absolutely leathered them first leg 4-0. I couldn't believe it. Could not believe it. Um, just battered them. Just 3-0 up at half time. I just couldn't believe it. Um, and then second leg, we drew 1-1 at their ground. They were the better team there. But it's a weird one. Like, how do you approach second legs? Do you know what I mean? It's, it's, it's a strange one, isn't it? Um, but yeah, we didn't have the best game. But we did what we needed to do. And then we played semi-final first leg against PSG. We lost 1-0, which was tough. Really tough. They were the better team. It was just... We scored an own goal. The thing is, is it seemed really hard to get through. Now look at their team. It was Lewandowski, Messi, Vinicius, Sanchez, Jorginho, Tonali, Kimpembe, Marquinhos, Hakimi, Theo Hernandez, Donnarumma. And then on the bench, they've got players like Verratti, obviously. Um, and, and they've got a few others as well. I think it came on through in the second second leg. But then we won the second leg 2-0. And, uh, and we dominated them, to be quite honest. Um, I put Haller up front for other Champions League games. They seem to do really well in them. Um, but yeah. No, they didn't have anyone on the bench. Okay, interesting. I thought they had some good players on the bench, PSG. Anyway, it doesn't matter. But that was a semi-final. We came through that. We scored in the second half. 66 minute with Kudus. Kudus and Gravenberch have carried us, really. Um, and yeah, we, des we, deserved our, we deserved our spot in the final, to be quite honest. Um, but yeah, we're about to play Barcelona. Let's do it. Let's do it. Right, guys, here we are for the Champions League final 2024, I think. Okay, see how we, see how we get on. Simicast, Stone Stones, Nakanji. Okay. I like how we're getting close to him. Got it tight. I like that. Yes, go, 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 go on. You got that. Go on, you got that. Oh, okay, I like, I like the intensity of our press there. <clears throat> I enjoyed that. It's going to be a problem getting the ball off Barcelona, I think. I think that's going to be the issue that we struggle with. Um, our team's not as good yet at keeping the ball. We're on we're on our way, but we're not there yet. <clears throat> we haven't got players like Pedri. He's a, he's a generational talent, really. We've got players like Frankie de Jong. We had what, obviously, he was at Ajax before, but we're trying to make our new Frankie de, Frankie de Jong's, right? Nothing happening, though, in the first half, really. We have snagged the possession back to 45%. More XG than them. So it looks like we've played okay that half. We've held our own more than. Um, I'm going to say I've been happy with our performance because I am. Ravenberch is tired. That is interesting. He's our best player. Who's targeted him? Okay. Nothing much happening. It's quite a nervy one, isn't it? Oh, dear. Just lost the ball. Oh, dear me. Can we win that back, please? Come on. Someone win that back. Come on. Someone win that back. Come on, win it back. Anyone. Can we win that back? Ah, see, that's what I didn't want. It's there a highlight now. It's so hard to get counter-attacking highlights on FM. Yeah, there is. There is. Unfortunately, <clears throat> as soon as they played that long diagonal ball, that was their highlight. I was hoping we could t uh, pinch it off them, but no, no such thing. 
Right, kick off. Something's happening from the kick off. Kudos to Darami. Back to Kudos. Darami. Go on, Darami. I trust Darami, man. He's so good. Look at him. Oh, he just. He just has sometimes a problem with his finishing, but then sometimes he doesn't. He's absolutely brilliant at times. And then sometimes he's really not. And then Torres is through. It's a nice effort from him. See, that's the thing there, right? Again, can you, see, you can see, can't you? Anthony's having a shocking game. I don't know what's wrong with him. I really don't know what's wrong with him. Um, obviously, I could put Darmy on that side, and then on this side, I can put uh, Van Dongen, which... Maybe I should have done from the start. But that's decisions you have to make. Um, Brian Brobby's not been the best. Let's put bring Tadic on. Uh, yeah, if Wrench was playing right back, I don't think Torres gets in to score that goal. Uh, sorry, to, uh, to to get down the line there. They win the ball back a lot better than we do. Yeah, oh, Pedri's through. Missed. I don't know what we're doing. We've gone to pot. We've gone to absolute pot. Died really well, they've scored, and then that's it. We've lost our heads here. I don't have to... This here on Grabber Merch has absolutely murdered us. It's murdered us. Like, I've got no one that's even close to how good he is. I mean, Mies Hoy. What have you got for us, man? A Champions League final at 18. You know? Such a such a close game as well. It doesn't look like we're gonna lose this one. Let me say never and all that, but yeah. I don't know what's I don't know why the game's lagging. But we're we've had more XG than them as well. Ah, oh, that's a tough one. <laughs> that's a tough one, but we go again. We go again. Barcelona win the Champions League. Unfortunately. Um yeah, I don't think don't, don't be too disheartened. We'll be back again. We'll be back again. Progression, right? Well, it's all right. It's, we're a team in progress. Um, there's a there's a project here, right? It's the Ajax project, and it's the Champions League final. Anything can happen. Gravenberch getting a knock early on didn't didn't help us. Like you can see, he's got 20 goals from the field. That would have been a big help. He just couldn't get couldn't get his legs going. He's just really tired, right? So he couldn't get beyond the strikers, which is uh, which is one of our main threats. Uh, it is what it is. It's a Champions League. It can happen. Um, but I hope you guys enjoyed the video. It's a bit of a longer one. Like I said, if you don't like it, maybe just consume it in uh, chunks of 15 minutes or whatever. Just be like, oh, I'll come back to Lewis in a minute. Um, but yeah, thank you for watching, guys. Um, if you liked the video, like the video. Just below me. If you, if you like the channel, subscribe. That would help me out a lot. And until next time, thank you for watching.